Welcome to today's uh, lesson, which is uh, the old uh, English folk song called Speed the Plough. Uh, the tune we think was written by uh, John Moorhead in the late uh, 1700s. It was actually called The Naval Pillar originally and was uh, part of a musical that was put on in 1799. And I think it was written just slightly before that, so that's the time it dates to. And a very well known song in folk circles, especially here in the UK. Um, and we're going to do it in the key of G major. And it is fairly quick, and there's some fairly tricky bits and pieces in it. Uh, you can download the tab, as usual, and also for this one, there is some sheet music, and I'll be going through the sheet music in this lesson with you, as well as the tab. So the notes in this tune are a scale of G major. Um, so we've got a G on the left-hand side, and then A on the right-hand side, B on the left hand side, uh, C on the right hand side, D on the left hand side, then we have E on the right hand side, then we have F sharp on the left hand side, and then we have uh, G on the right hand side. Uh, so in the key of G you've got an F sharp to worry about. Uh, G major, I should say. So the notes in order in that scale are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. So we have an octave G. Uh, the low G is on the left hand side, and the high G is on the right hand side. Let's look at the music now. Um, in the first bar, uh, it's four, four, four bits in the bar. There are eight notes, so each note is worth half a beat. They're all quavers and you've got this run up through the scale. You're actually playing the first one, two, three, four, five, six notes of the scale. G, A, B, C, D, E, so you do that left, right, left, right, left, right sort of thing. So you're using the middle two rows on both sides, okay, because it's all white notes if you like. Uh, apart from when you play that F sharp, which is obviously on the lowest row because it's a, a sharp note. And we do that in the in the sort of B section of the tune. So once you've done the run up, the G A B C, you've then got D E D B D E D B D E D B uh, three times, and then on the right hand side you've got C E C, and on the left hand side you've got B D B, uh, and then on the right hand side you've got C A A. Okay, then you do all that again. And to finish the A part, you go C and A on the right hand side and G on the left, and you repeat from the start. The B part is definitely harder. You've got four of those G's there, and then you run down to the F sharp, so that's that, that one sharp note in the, in the tune. And then E on the right hand side, and then on the left hand side, you've got D, B, G, B, so the component parts of a G major called D, B, G. And then again you do this C, E, C on the left, on the right hand side, B, D, B, and then you've got C, A, A on the right hand side. So it's all the same as before. Then you repeat that. And to finish again you go C, A on the right hand side, and G on the left. Let's talk about some timings here. Um, the first two bars are all quavers, so you're counting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Uh, on the third bar you've got one, two and three, four and. Crotchet two quavers, crotchet two quavers, and then one, two, three. Um, in the fourth bar of the tune you've got crotchet, crotchet, minim. So one, two, three. So the A, the, the second A in that bar, comes on beat three and lasts for beat three and four. Then you've got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three, four and one, two, three, four. So practically the same, except you end on G, not A. So you've got the G minim. 
If you're looking at the music, you can then see two dots, thin line, thick line, which takes you back to the beginning. The B part starts those three high Gs. Crotchet, crotchet, minim, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. And the next bar there, crotchet, and then six quavers, one, two, and three, and four. And, and uh, everything that follows has been played before in the tune. Just a couple of things I wanted to say today. You notice I was playing my Jackie concertina there. That's the, the first one that I, I, I had out of the three that I now own. And it's, uh, you know, it's a really, really nice concertina. Uh, you'd call it budget end. It's not uh, uh, made of wood, it's made of plastic. Um, but it's really good, it's very responsive. And, uh, you know, if you've got the Jackie concertina like this, you know, I wouldn't recommend rushing into buying an expensive vintage concertina um, because uh, you really don't need to. Um, this will give you everything you need. Um, you may want that vintage sound. If you do, then you will have to sort of lash out on an old Wheatstone or something like that. But other than that, you know, they are fantastic instruments for the money and really do the job well. The other piece of advice I'd like to give you today is don't get too caught up with spending too much time on the internet. There are forums uh, on the internet for the concertina full of really clever, very knowledgeable people who can give you good advice. But I've certainly made the mistake over the last few weeks of spending hours and hours and hours surfing the forums, uh, perhaps instead of playing, you know, that's the main thing I'm trying to say is, you know, don't get caught up in, you know, that side of things too much. Spend more time playing the thing uh, and getting to make music. That's the most important thing, isn't it? This is what the tune sounds like on my Marcus uh, concertina, which is a modern concertina uh, made in 2007. And it's got a very different sound to the Jackie. Uh, see what you think. And now on my Lashnell. Anyway, that's the end of today's lesson and I hope you enjoyed it.